Hi, welcome to Team Leadership Reviews. So you've got your printer and you thought about doing some upgrades. But what upgrades do you need? So you've got your printer set up, you've got your first prints, you'll then look at all the forums and they say, oh, you need some upgrades. Print the upgrades. Oh. Mind blowing amount of upgrades. But what upgrades are the most important upgrades for your printer? I printed every conceivable upgrade, I think. What upgrades? The upgrades I'm going to cover in this video, filament guides, little plastic clips, a glass bed, a metal extruder, and an SD card adapter. I can't think of any more. It's designed to take the roller on the top, but then it's coming off the roller and coming into the, what they call the extruder, which is, which is the, the drive mechanism where the filament goes through. And I found you could print this filament guide, but you need the little nuts and bolts. And this filament guide took it off the roll and just held it away from the printer so that the filament can go through. So if you're running outside of an enclosure, if you're in an enclosure, you're not gonna use this, but if you are printing it on a, on a desktop and you've got the, the filament on top, then that's a good print to do. At the bottom end, there was another one. I got a little ball bearing roller to go on the bottom. Like I said, this is brittle, and if it gets pulled or jammed, instead of it unreeling, it could snap off. So I wanted this. This was help, helping the filament go smoothly into the machine. Ah, uh, the little clips that clip the tube to the cables. Nice little upgrade. Very simple and quick to print. Filament rollers. The standard roller is just a plastic tube. If you want it to be a little bit slicker, there are some rollers with ball bearings which can be handy. I should show you that. Ah. Oh. The aluminium extruder kit is an upgrade because the original one is plastic. It works okay, it's not a problem, but the metal one is a little bit more durable. This particular one I've got is a dual drive. You're not gonna know what that means. Instead of the plastic, you can get kits where they're metal. This is a metal kit. This is the drive wheel that fits on the stepper motor and there's a little free free running wheel and the filament goes in through the hole there and drives through and this is the tube that goes to the print head. So it's feeding the filament through there. The stepper motor has got the drive with teeth on it and the teeth grip the filament and push it through the tube to the print head. This is the important bit because this is actually pushing the plastic into the print head that causes the plastic to ooze out to make the layer. So I thought I'd try Instead of having one brass drive and the other one a free spinning a V pulley, I thought I'd get one with two pulley drives and a geared system. It's a little bit more complex. That was a tenner. It's not going to break the bank. It's cheap enough. And I thought I'd try it and it does work, but did it make a big difference? What I liked about that one, this one has got a hole. That one has got another fit in so I could use a little bit of tube which takes it outside my enclosure. It was easier for me to feed it in than me struggling with the enclosure in the way to get the filament in there. So I bought that one because of the enclosure, otherwise I'd still be using this one. You're gonna be waiting for me to get to the enclosure and you, you wanna know about the enclosure, don't you? Another upgrade, it sounds bizarre. Tubes can actually make a difference. The filament is 1.75 millimeters thick. That's two millimeter inside diameter. 1.75 millimeter filament in a two millimeter hole fits really easy. But there's a little bit of play. You have only got to travel that distance, but there's a little bit of slack. Only probably a millimeter of slack, but there's slack in there. This tube, higher quality PTFE, higher quality. It's got a 1.9 
millimeter, 1.9 millimeter. So instead of a two millimeter hole, it's in a 1.9 millimeter hole. Wow. It's better quality PTFE, tighter tolerances. The flexible stuff, when that's feeding in there, because it's flexible, it's moving around a lot more. The PLA will make a difference with these, I must say, very little difference. Flexible filament, because it is naturally flexible and wants to, whatever. The quality of the print is improved because it's got less space to move around in that tube. It's a tighter fit. So it feeds in, it doesn't, it doesn't have such a problem, apparently. That's what a lot of the experts say. It is an upgrade. If you look at the DERA models, they've got this fitted. Cheaper model. Another upgrade. The Ender 3 Pro comes with what they call a magnetic bed. So this is the plate, what you print into. And it's basically a big magnet. Trust me, it's a magnet. And there's obviously another sheet of this magnetic plate on the bed, which is heated. Which is great because when these are stuck on there, you can simply lift it up and peel it and snap them off and then get them off, off here quite quickly when the bed is still warm. So this was a nice little feature. When this is worn out, you can buy another one. This was actually upgrade over the Ender 3. When I started off, it was great. You can see it's discolored. Isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. Lol. That is what you need for cleaning these. When it's not so sticky anymore or get, get a bit of oil from your fingers or or whatever, and you feel that the prints are not sticking or failing, then clean it with some alcohol, and then it's good to go again. But obviously it gets to a time when this gets a little bit smooth and shiny, and it starts to fail regularly, as I did with this one. I made the mistake of using acetone, and it melted a little bit of the surface and made it a little bit more glossy. It is a matte and textured finish, but where I've been printing mostly, it's now smooth and shiny. I could just rough it up with a bit of sandpaper and it's good to go again. But I decided to change to a glass bed. Instead of that magnetic plate, I bought, same size, glass. Plain glass that side. This side has got a textured finish. And what it does, this is the same sort of material as, as what's on that plastic sheet. Makes it a little bit more tacky. So, But because it's glass, the, the whole of the glass heats up an even temperature, whereas the plastic is probably depending be hotter where the elements are. This this absorbs heat and holds heat, whereas the plastic, when the heater goes off, it cools down really quickly. So there's no thermal mass to that plastic sheet. There's a lot of thermal mass to this, so it could be a little bit more economical energy-wise. I found this good upgrade. However. You can't get the models off. When they're stuck, they are stuck. But as it cools down, they'll come off easy. After 10 minutes or so after it's finished, you can go up and you can go dink and off it'll come. So this is a good upgrade, better quality. It's firmer, rigid. Once you've set the bed, then the bed level, then this doesn't warp or twist. So I like this. That was 12 pound, not expensive. The memory card. As you said, it's a micro SD card. Uh, this is an SD card. Micro SD card's a lot smaller. A bit fiddly going in and out of the box. It's on the front, there's a little slot. You're clicking in, clicking out, putting on the PC, uploading it with models, putting it back in, click, 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 click. And I thought, how long before that socket is worn out? So I found a little device that come with a ribbon lead with a little micro SD socket and an SD reader on the end of it. So I plugged it into the micro SD and I had a full SD. Now I've had some of these old cards, this is a two gigabyte one, from some of my old cameras. Now I can wear that out, it doesn't matter because it's only once I plugged it into the main board. But this little SD card adapter, I can plug in and out, in and out until, it, until it's worn out. Then I can unplug it, plug a new one in without damaging the main board. Come on, that is worth it, gotta be worth it. I mean, don't wear out the, the socket that's on the motherboard. Wear out an adapter lead. Easy peasy. So I bought one of them. You could just as easily get one, a smaller compact unit with a micro SD socket on the front. Exactly the same if you want to stick with micro SD. But I bought the full size SD because I wanted it. Printed a little caddy that suits this printer, which has got holes to bolt it on. Job done. And... 
a bag of nozzles. What I found is that when I'm printing, if the nozzle's starting to get blocked and troublesome, you find that the, the filament starts sticking to it and it's, it's dragging little, little tails off and always getting a mess. The first layer struggles to go down. Bang a new nozzle in there, you're good to go. The PTFE tube in there, what you need, what they say is the nozzle and the PTFE tube should be a good mate. You've got to cut the tube perfectly 90 degrees, follow the instructions, you can't go wrong. Make sure that's all the way home. What I normally do is when I change the nozzle, got to do it hot, slacken the nozzle off, put a new, clean all the, any, any debris out of there, put the tube through there a couple of times, make sure it's, it's flowing, it's going in easy, there's no blockages of any plastic. Then put the nozzle in, hand tight, as far as you can go, put the, the PTFE tube down so it stop, comes to stop with the nozzle, and then crank the nozzle up fully tight, and you, that, that means then it'll force the nozzle tight against the tube. So like I said, you're putting the top nozzle in tight, back quarter of a turn, PTFE tube, quarter of a turn to make sure that the nozzle and the tube are mated really tight. And that will make a big difference. If there's a gap, then it causes a little bubble, which acts like a reservoir, which messes up their print quality. So they always say that the tube should be perfectly 90 degrees cut. They even got little cutters to cut them with. And it should be tight up against the nozzle. A better mate between the nozzle and the PTFE tube, the better quality prints. You get that? The little feet on the bottom were squash ball mounted feet. They were squash balls. Basically, you print off the, the foot, and if you've got some spare squash balls, you wedge them in there. And having that little bit of some dampening, a bit of rubber, made a, a massive difference to the vibrations on the table. Now, you could use the foam that comes with your printers. You know, just cut off some strips of that foam and put it underneath. But I thought I'll do something a little bit more permanent and I've used the squash ball feet. So that's a handy upgrade. Enclosure. You've been waiting for the enclosure, haven't you? I think I'll dedicate my next video to my enclosure. How noisy is the 3D printer? My 3D printer has been printing while I've been talking and you probably haven't even noticed. If I open the door, might be able to hear it. So the enclosure is also good for sound attenuation. Another feature, I'll get back to you on the next video on my enclosure. Thank you for watching Team Reshoot Reviews. Bye.